Sarah, welcome. Hi, how are you? Good. I was thinking about you this morning before we got started. And I remember my first phone call from you when you wanted to get into the wedding show. Um, and I remember you saying you had just gotten married and your experience wasn't great um, buying your wedding gown. And you thought there was a real need for something um, a little different. And that was back how many years ago now, Sarah? 17 years ago, Nancy. Can you believe it? Yes. Well, no, but yes. <laughs> I know it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> We've been through a lot of wedding shows together. So purchasing a dress at it your at it's your day bridal boutique is a little different than um, some experience that couples are used to or brides are used to. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about what makes that visit different. Sure. We've actually just changed our process about a year and a half ago here at it's your day. Um, I spent some time doing some research just to not only kind of set ourselves aside as something different, um, but also to just create a better experience, an easier experience for the bride. Um, what we were finding since we moved into this new store eight years ago, um, brides would come in, they would see all the gowns, they would, this look of overwhelming, like they were a deer in headlights. They just kind of saw these dresses and thought, how the heck am I going to find one dress in all of these gowns? So what we've done a little bit different is that we've actually cr created a closed stock store. And what that means is that all of the gowns are not out to visibly like browse through because we found that 75% of our brides bought a dress they wouldn't have even considered trying on. So what has happened is, is that people would look through, they would see it hanging on the hanger. It looked different than what it looked like on the body. So in order to kind of combat that um, and, and really concentrate on what the bride's needs were, because a lot of times she didn't really know what her needs were, is that we start out now with a um, registration process. When they book their appointment, we send them a Google form that has some questions, um, basic questions about you know, their event date and whatnot, but it also kind of gears into how do they want to look? Who are they bringing with them? Um, you know, how do they want to feel? What things or, or details do they absolutely want? And what things do they absolutely not want? And by doing that, we basically go through all the gowns because our stylists are experts. We know we try on every gown when it comes in. We know what body type it's going to fit. They're very, our staff are very well educated on body types and fits. Um, so then based on the, that initial um, Google form, we follow it up with a phone call before the customer even comes in. So then we can pull out dresses and have them ready before they even walk in the store. So we kind of get to know them and invest in them before they even come in to look. And what our response from customers has been is that I think we probably hear it 10 times a day when customers leave it was like that was so easy because we took all that stress away and really focused on the details and how they want to look and feel um, one thing that I really found that kind of prompted this change was you know brides would come in shopping they'd give us a budget and then their guests would just pull out dresses. Oh, this is fun. Let's try it on. And then instead of creating like a positive experience, it became sort of a negative because if the customer, like the bride really didn't want to try to fit a dress and she doesn't like how she feels, she puts it on, she doesn't feel great. So it also helped with um, sticking within budget because people, you know, would pick out dresses that were double their budget, say, oh, just try it on. Girls, that's a terrible, terrible idea. Because if you fall in love with it, you don't want to be disappointed because not necessarily that you can't afford it, but that's just not what you were budgeting for. So saying yes to a dress seems like the one of the first decisions brides make. I, I think they think the venue and then they think the dress. How far in advance should a, a bride start thinking about buying her dress if she's getting married right now just got engaged and is thinking 2023 is now the time to buy her dress or should she hold back a bit well i guess my recommendation is you can never be too early but you can be too late so if you want to have like 
all of the options available to you. Um, you don't have to worry about ordering and timelines of getting things in because everything is manufactured in China. So for the most part, with the exception of one line that we carry. Um, so they do take anywhere from five to eight months to arrive once they've been ordered. So ideally, we always tell the bride like that eight to 12 month mark is kind of like your perfect window. However, because it is one of the first things that they're shopping for, if your wedding is two years, two and a half years out, I mean, if you come in, you put a dress on, you feel amazing in it, that will never change. So dresses, I mean, I've been doing this for 17 years and really there are very few dresses that have gone out of style. Um, and actually funny enough, those things are kind of coming back in turn right now. So, I mean, a two year window, it, once you've put it on, you found it, you fell in love, you can continue with the process of planning. And now you can pick your color scheme, you can pick your bridesmaids and you don't have to be stressed out about like the pressure of finding a gown. So, you know, if there are brides out there, we've seen it this year, especially with the pandemic, that wedding dates, you know, are a month out. We still have options for those brides as well. But the ideal timeline, you know, if, if you're kind of like putting that thumb on it, would be that eight to 12 month mark. So I have to ask you a question because you brought up the Canadian line um, and a lot of gowns, as we know, are made in China or the Orient. So with that being said, is the Canadian line a little more expensive for brides that want to consider buying Canadian? I, you know, they are and they're not because they definitely, the line that we carry is Paloma Blanca. So they manufacture Paloma Blanca and Michaela. Um, they do have two separate price points. So they are manufactured with like a little bit better quality material. However, they're not fully beaded. That's not something that's their signature. Um, so, you know, you are paying for Canadian manufacturing. So the labor is a little bit more, but they're still probably within a window of let's say 1500 to 2500 with the average dress just across the board selling right now is anywhere between 17 and 22. So, mm -hmm. Even in comparison, they are a little slightly more, but I mean, the quality of the fabrics and the fit are uh, like unprecedented, so. Are there certain bridal gown lines that are better fits for different body types? So for silhouettes, I mean, a lot of the designers now have kind of, there used to be basically a four silhouette standard. You had, you know, your ball gown A-line, you had your fitted dresses, you had your sheets, and you had your A-line. And really, they've now modified a lot of those things to take into consideration, let's say, for myself, I am very straight. So typically, a fitted dress, I don't have the curves to fill that out. But now they've kind of modified um, styles. So they've taken those fitted styles and added ruching. So it gives you that illusion of shape. So even though a lot of brides think, you know, based on their body type, they can't wear this, I tell them never to rule it out because there is typically a silhouette. If you love something specifically, there's always a way of a variant to make it work for your body type. So I always suggest don't rule anything out. Choosing a dress for your bridesmaids. I know that can be probably one of the, um, more complicated fashion decisions because there's a lot of personalities involved. Um, can you tell us what you suggest, tips you suggest for brides when it comes to the point of choosing uh, something for the bridesmaids? Okay, so my favorite thing for bridesmaids right now is where the bride will select, you know, a specific designer, select a color from that designer and let her bridesmaids choose a dress that they feel beautiful in within those spectrums. So, you know, whatever the, you know, if you want your bridesmaids all in a chiffon dress or you want them all in an A-line dress, by letting them select a style that works well for their body type, they feel more beautiful in the dress, first of all, because they're more confident, they're not wearing something they're uncomfortable, which then in turn, you know, the bride's photos look more beautiful because, you know, you have this confident bridesmaid feeling great in a dress. The other thing I think it does is that, you know, when you have say 10 bridesmaids and they're all wearing the same dress, 
the likelihood that they're going to wear the dress to another public event is pretty slim because they're worried about nine other people wearing that dress to that event. So by letting them choose their own dress, I think it allows them to potentially be able to wear that dress again because they're not going to have that worry of like, oh, that other bridesmaid is going to this event. What if she wears that dress? Yeah, so that, I think uh, the fashion stylist that uh, that came up with that concept, it's really genius. And and I think when you look at photos of weddings where bridesmaids are in uh, their own style dress, same colors, it, it's extremely flattering for everyone. And it is. And, you know, then they're picking a style that suits their body the best. And, you know, I, I feel like for so long, you know, everybody's kind of been this cookie cutter of like, okay, you have the bridesmaids, they're all in the same dress, they're all, you know, whatever. It's kind of gotten a little bit sticky because there are still some brides that like that uniformity, which is awesome because we can, you know, as a stylist, we know what styles look good across many different body types. So, you know, if there are brides out there that still love that idea, you know, trust in your consultant to be able to pull dresses that work well for many different body types, um, because that that's still, you know, a great option. But for the brides that do like the option of putting them in that different shape, I mean, it just gives them so much more flexibility. And I think then the bridesmaids that are choosing those dresses, um, they feel like they've been part of that process as opposed to maybe just being told what to wear or what to do, which I mean, let's face it, brides, you know, it is your day. So, I mean, you do as, you know, asking your bridesmaids to be part of that, it, it, that is kind of about the bride, right? So, but it does give them that little, I mean, I guess just that little say in, you know, what they feel great in. Tell us a little bit about the trends that you're seeing in mother of the bride and groom dresses, Sarah. Well, I think the biggest thing for moms right now is um, just finding something they feel beautiful in. So it's not necessarily a mother of the bride dress, if you know, like they're just getting like, you know, a lot of our moms will even go into a bridesmaid dress that's just a little fancier, um, you know, or cocktail dresses. Um, I, I am like such a firm believer in you don't have to be inside of a box. Yeah. So I always say to the bride, like, it's all about you, your style, your personal taste. Like, don't, don't think because you're getting married in December that you have to have red bridesmaids. Um, if pink is your favorite color, then go with pink. And I think that that is the biggest trend that I'm seeing is that people aren't really conforming to that standard of what used to be in the mindset of they have to do. So like we're seeing a lot of moms even wearing black because they look skinny. It's timeless. It's classic where, I mean, 15 years ago, even it was like, no one ever came in with moms wearing black. And I think we have a lot of 55, six year old moms who are pretty fit these days too. You know, I don't even think it's necessarily even just about being fit because you, you like, I mean, there are so many dresses that really complement any type of figure. And it's about showing off your assets and hiding the flaws that you don't like. And I, I think it's more about like these 55 year old moms or even 65 year old moms, they're still young. They're young at heart. They don't want to look like their moms. So they want to look and feel their age and they feel young and they, you know, they look young. I mean, I, I'm 45 and I remember thinking back like 20 years ago, like I knew 50 year old women that I thought like they were white haired little old ladies. And now, I mean, God forbid, like 90 year old women to me look like 50 year old women used to look. So I think that has played a big part in um, the fashion trends for mom too. When same sex couples are marrying Sarah, they may have questions in regards to how, how to complement each other's fashion choices. What advice would you give to these couples when they begin their search for their perfect wedding day looks? Well, I guess, first of all, like for me, my thought process is that both brides or grooms um, should be shopping with the same vendor because they don't necessarily need to shop together if they want to keep that element of surprise. 
But the really great thing about doing that is first off, you know, the, the consultant or the store or whoever you're dealing with, um, they kind of already would know what person A is wearing versus person B. So we can kind of like direct without giving the secrets away. Um, but the biggest thing I think too is that like some people think like it has to match. And in my opinion, that that isn't necessarily the case. It's like you want to coordinate. Um, we see that even with moms and bridesmaids and groomsmen. And it's like, you know, everybody doesn't have to be in the same color blue. You can kind of differentiate and feel what you're, you feel beautiful in, but still make it work. And I know Laz, who we're speaking to tonight, uh, we talked in our test run and uh, he will speak to that as well and can fit, um, you know, females who want to wear a custom made suit. So anything can go. It's what fits your style. Yeah, and I, and I don't think people need to be kept, again, in that, that box. And the other thing is, is I know that we do, and I'm sure a lot of other vendors do um, for same-sex weddings, or even for um, brides that are purchasing two dress, we actually have a uh, discount um, for people that are buying two dresses for the same wedding. So whether it's same-sex or whether it's a bride buying two dresses, um, you know, we do like incentives for even for the brides when they come with their bridesmaids, if they've purchased one, we're, we're giving them discounts and incentives um, to shop all in one place. So fashion's my thing and I still have more questions for you, but we normally open up. So we're gonna run through these one rapid fire really quick okay. and then we'll open up the chat line. Uh, okay. So veil or no veil, headpiece, real flowers or fake flowers? Oh, I love it all because I own an accessory company now, Nancy. So I say do it all. Do it all. So you don't have a preference. Is there some, just once again, your style, do it your way. And I think the accessories sometimes are harder than finding the dress because everything goes. It's a matter again, like how do you envision yourself walking down the aisle? And I will tell you, a lot of people come in and say they don't want a veil. And then you put them in a veil and they feel like a bride and that's instant change of their mind. And that was me as a bride. I was like, absolutely no way. And then I put it on and I was like, oh, I feel like a bride. Next question, um, 2020 brought smaller weddings. 2021 looks like they're gonna be smallish again, uh, going into the beginning of the wedding season anyway. Um, change the dress if you have a big dress, keep whatever you, you want, go big, go large, even though you might be having a smaller, more intimate backyard affair. Okay, my philosophy on that is you do you because you are the bride. It doesn't matter if you have five people in your living room or you have 500 people in a hall, you are the bride. If you want to feel like a princess that day, wear a ball gown. Nobody's going to judge you for it. And guess what? It's all about you that day. Okay, this is the last rapid fire question. I got married in 2020. I'm having a huge party um, when I can. Should I buy a new dress for that? Okay, so I know I sell dresses and I could easily say yes, buy two dresses. My philosophy on that is, I don't know about you, Nance, but I, my wedding dress is my wedding dress. And I like think about that, nothing changes how beautiful I felt in that dress. It's that emotional connection. So for me, I say wear the same dress. Awesome, thank you. We're going to the chats and we've got lots of questions. Okay. I have two brides coming from Europe. Fingers crossed they are able to uh, take part in my wedding. Uh, but is there any advice you can give on purchasing bridesmaids dresses in stores for those who are not physically there for sizing? Um, are, are there any online uh, credible stores you can recommend for shopping for bridesmaids dresses? Okay, I got perfect answer for that. So us as the professionals, we deal with this every day. I would say one out of every four bridesmaids is from out of town. So when you're buying from a brick and mortar store. Um, even with us, we are in the process of launching an online store. Um, so people from out of town, this is exactly why we started it. They can put in their measurements. We can walk them through how to do their measurements because each company that we sell for dresses, whether it's brides or bridesmaids, all have a separate size chart. So based on you know the fit of the dress, the style, how much inseam is left, um, no one ever fits perfectly based on their sizes into a size chart. So we can give good recommendations based on the measurements we have. 
um, of what size they should be ordering. And then the one big thing is when you're ordering all dresses, if, especially if they're the same color, they should be ordered at the same store. So they're all cut from the same dye lot and you don't have any variants of color shades in the, the bridesmaid dresses. That's great advice. If the lockdown continues, are there options for dress shopping? And uh, there are. We're getting married in October and she plans to go out in February, but she's worried about the lockdown. And, and we're going to be sending you contact information um, right after this. So check your uh, mailbox and you'll be able to click over to It's Your Day's newest options. But go ahead and explain what those are, Sarah. So we launched this the last time we went in lockdown as kind of like a soft launch. And then we kind of really keyed in on how we were going to do it. So we're offering at-home try-on boxes right now for those brides that are getting married this year that need an option that potentially can't wait till February, or maybe they have immune compromised family members that they want to include and they don't want to be out in the public. So we're offering options with that, um, doing Zoom virtual appointments to like give them that consultation, just like we do over the phone, pick out the dresses, we put them in the box, they can come and pick them up. We do a Zoom appointment through, so we can walk them through where to clip, any questions they have. Um, and we've been super successful. We're at an 80% um, like closure rate for people finding dresses through those at-home try-on boxes. Um, and if you, Probably in the next week to two weeks, we're offering a full online shopping experience as well um, with every product that we carry in the store. So, you know, for those brides that have their gown but need accessories or shoes, um, we have that because we're still here. We're working behind the scenes and we're doing curbside. So there are options for brides that need that right now. You know, I'm so inspired by all the wedding vendors and entrepreneurs and how imaginative um, we've become. I can tell you this, I was speaking to a supplier that's a national wide supplier that was that has is in our show every year. And he said, we are the only city that is providing him with with um, a wedding show like this, the only city in Canada right now. So you know, thank you, Sarah, for be, being such an entrepreneur and coming up with the solutions needed because our couples are planning their wedding and they need our help. We know that. And you know what? It's easy to sit at home and like, okay, my business is closed, you know, whatever, but there are still brides getting married. They need our help. And, and that's, you know, that's what's been important to us is like, how can we help them? I'm a broad sh uh, shouldered and large busted girl but I still want some sort of sleeve what might be the best option for me so there are lots of options with sleeves and the other really great option that you have is that we have our two of our former seamstresses who no longer work in-house but do work they do have businesses um there's lots of customization options so you know we can when we're doing consulting um we can help those customers be able to find exactly what they need but having broad shoulders anything that is you know tank style that that draws that eye in like a v-neck works really good as long as it's not super low plunging or some people if they are busty they want to show that's their assets um but we can always add sleeves to those so like you know a lace sleeve an illusion sleeve there are all kinds of great options the one thing I would say not to do if you're broad shouldered and busty is sort of open off the shoulder because it's going to make your shoulders look broader. Okay, we're three minutes away from cutting off, but we have 12 questions still to get through. So I'd like to get through as many of these as we can. So let's let's try to go at it. And we'll, even if we stay on an extra few minutes today, I think it's important. Okay. These questions seem to be important to our guests today. Um, how many dresses does a bride try on with their standard appointment? So that really depends on the bride. And typically I would say they're probably between eight and 15 dresses. Um, and again, we, because we have over 600 dresses, um, very rarely do people leave without finding a dress that they love. Bridal capes in place of a veil, yes or no? I love it. And actually this year we've designed a couple of bridal capes um, with my accessory company. Uh, to show because that's something I love. So I, I say those are it. always stunners on the fashion show stage too. So they yeah. must be stunners in real life. Mm -hmm. uh, what are options for brides that have decided to elope with the lockdown right now? Um, like as far as dress shopping, we have so many options. Um, you know, a lot of times people think like wedding gown is a big ball gown. 
that is not necessarily the case. And we have an off the rack shop that um, will be launched with our online, which are great savings on some amazing dresses. And, you know, again, if even if it's just the two of you, if you want something, you want a ball gown, you're good to go. So off the rack means you have it in stock. It doesn't have to be ordered ahead of time. It's there if it fits you or, or uh, if it fits you fairly well, you can alter it, get it ready to go fast and out the door. And out the door. They okay. can pick it up and do curbside and like have it tomorrow. Do you recommend choosing a bridesmaid color online? I fell in love with a certain color I saw uh, from America, from an American wedding and I want it. But is that color available in Canada? Okay, so the caution I give to people when they find things online is your monitor, your resolution on the screen, the photo that it was taken, they are never the same as the swatch. The best bet is to bring in the photo, try to match up a swatch to the color that you saw that you love, because what the physical fabric swatches are is what the colors that are available. Do you rec recommend going to a bridal store first to kind of narrow down what are some good choices for your bridesmaids? You know what? I mean, that's a loaded question because depending on the bride, um, it could actually cause her more stress to try to figure out who's going to like what and what she assumes might be different. Um, but there are some brides that basically, you know, especially if the bride's looking to put everybody in the same dress, that's probably the easiest option. So I guess that really depends on her, her personality. What are the options for brides who don't want to wear white? Okay. So I would say that we sell about 1% of our gowns in actual white white a year for bridal um and then it's about a 50 50 split between ivory and then the off colors like moscato champagne almonds um and then blush we, is blush available this bride saying she'd like to wear blush absolutely and there's so many shades of blush that is probably the majority of what's available and then we do have some dresses that are available in black or blue so for those brides that want something completely out of the box Bra options, what do you recommend for a larger chested uh, bride getting married in the spring? Okay, so most of the dresses are constructed with so much construction that most of our brides don't even need to wear a bra. It's not like a regular gown where there's one piece of boning. Most of them have so much structure that they don't even need to wear a bra. I have a bride saying it's not a question. She just wanted to say that she loves your store. And can't wait to come in for a fitting and, and find a dream dress. Is there any online resource uh, for you to recommend to help determine shape and fit? Um, you know, I think it's kind of hard because each style of dress, like I could put one bride in 10 A-lines and three of them look terrible. So I, I really think it's a more a matter of coming in and just trusting your stylist to be able to put you in things that they think is going to look good on your shape. Um, okay, I'm, these questions just keep coming and coming. I've got 14 <laughs> new ones. So we do have to end it. People are on their lunch. I'm going to ask you two more questions and I want to encourage everyone online that had questions. I take it you're going to be available right after this? Absolutely. Okay, so we'll be sending you out the contact information today immediately. So check Perfect. your inboxes and reach out to Sarah and they will answer your questions for you. How to store your dress. I bought my dress last year and my wedding is postponed for another two years. That's a great question. You know what? That is a great question. Um, basically, one thing you want to do is put it in a breathable garment bag. Don't put it in plastic and just put it in the back of your closet out of the sunlight. And as long as you're not using any kind of dry cleaning or anything where it'll actually oxidize the fabric, your dress will be fine. Okay. I'm going to ask you two more. What's a reasonable budget on, on average for a wedding dress? I would say on average, we're between 1700 and 2200 is where most dresses will fall. Okay. And um, how many bridesmaid mother of the bride's dresses uh, can you take home? So I guess this is someone that wants maybe your box service at home. Are you doing mother of the bride and bridesmaids as well? You know what? We haven't had a request for it, but absolutely we can figure out you know, logistics of it because it's the same process. So um, we can, we can definitely, you know, they can reach out to us directly and we can kind of figure up a plan because again, it's always, we're always constantly changing de dependent on what the customer's needs are. 
Well, Sarah, thank you. We're looking at doing some mini workshops after Valentine's Day again. So I, the, the demand and the questions, they just keep coming. Um, once again, I'm going to remind everyone, we are going to put Sarah's contact information up on the screen. Uh, we're also going to send you an email that you can click right over to their website. Um, we're going to put the wheel up right now and pick our winner.